home of the prestigious University of Edinburgh and built on top of extinct volcanoes, the capital of Scotland is reputed to be one of the most haunted cities on the planet. Edinburgh, a beautiful and ancient city, has a long dark past of plagues, wars, and horrific executions. Even the lovely Prince's Street Gardens have a grotesque origin story, starting out as a lake where human waste and even bodies were dumped, giving off a horrendous stench. A smell so pungent, it earned Edinburgh its ancient nickname of Old Reeky. Come along for this Curio Cat College Town tour with a twist as we explore the very haunted side of Edinburgh. We'll start our tour along one of the most famous streets in the world, the Royal Mile, which runs through the heart of Edinburgh's Old Town, connecting Edinburgh Castle with Holyrood Palace. It's hard to imagine today, but it was a grim place full of torture and death during the witch hysteria spanning the 16th to 18th centuries. Although this witch hysteria was widespread in Europe, Scotland holds the title of having executed the most people under the accusation of witchcraft. Torture was common and often brutal in an attempt to extract confessions. Historical records show close to 4,000 people standing accused of witchcraft in Scotland, with two-thirds of them being executed, either by strangulation, drowning, or burning at the stake. But in Edinburgh, they were also placed in wooden barrels spiked with nails and pushed down the Royal Mile before burning the barrels to ashes. As you make your way along the Royal Mile, you can't miss St. Giles Kirk. This site has had a church on it since the 9th century. And while I couldn't find any ghost stories associated with the glorious church itself, the grounds of the church held a notorious prison. Found in front of St. Giles is the Heart of Midlothian, which marks the site of the entrance to Tollbooth Prison, where many prisoners were held over the years, including all of Edinburgh's accused witches awaiting execution. A little further down, you'll find gold bricks across from the Hume statue, marking the spot of Edinburgh's gallows, a place of public executions of witches, among others and where the last public execution in Edinburgh took place not that long ago in 1864. Eventually, you'll find yourself on Castle Hill, where most of Edinburgh's witches were burned at the stake. And this beautiful memorial, the Witches' Well, marks a site where over 300 women were burned, the most out of any other site in Scotland. With a history like that, you're guaranteed to run into a restless spirit or two. Our next stop is perched on a 350 million year old extinct volcano. Edinburgh Castle looms over the capital city and can be spotted from almost any angle. This particular spot has had a castle on it since the 11th century, but has been occupied since the late Bronze Age. It's the most besieged castle in Britain and considered one of the most haunted spots in all of Scotland. Countless visitors report sudden drops in temperature, unseen things pulling at their clothes, or mysterious orbs floating about. And if you smell the stench of poo and feel something pushing you as you creep closer to the castle walls, that might just be the dung prisoner. He tried to escape by hiding in a wheelbarrow full of dung, only to be tipped over the rocky cliffs to his death along with the castle waste. Other resident ghosts include invisible marching soldiers, phantom pipers, a headless drummer boy, and even a wandering dog. There's also the Grey Lady that wanders through the halls, thought to be executed accused witch Janet Douglas, the Lady of Glamis. But the castle's most famous spirit is Bloody Clavers, or John Graham of Claverhouse, 
who had a dark reputation for ruthlessly persecuting a certain religious group, the Covenanters, in the 17th century. And when everyone leaves for the night and the castle is empty of tourists, it's said you can hear the beat of the drums of the headless, unknown drummer boy. Our tour of the underground vaults began where almost all ghost tours of Edinburgh start, at the ancient Mercat Cross, with a demon story all its own. Back in the year 1513, Richard Lawson saw the devil rise up at the Mercat Cross in a puff of smoke. This demon began reading a list of names of men who would perish at the Battle of Flodden the next day. So Lawson began to pray and threw a coin to the devil and was the only man on the list that survived. So after that harrowing tale, we made our way to the cryptic maze of tunnels beneath the city streets. The infamous Edinburgh vaults were the hangout of notorious serial killers Burke and Hare, who murdered their 16 victims to sell their bodies to science, a very lucrative trade at the time. And the bodies ultimately ended up on the dissecting table of Robert Knox during his renowned anatomy lectures. Terrifying tales of angry spirits abound in these vaults and include stories of a silent man in black named the Watcher, several other faceless men, and numerous poltergeists. There's also the ghost of a boy named Jack that <laughs> likes to play with you and pull on your clothes. And one of these vaults is home to a vicious, unknown poltergeist that attacks visitors. But which one is it? Fortunately, I emerged unscathed and was ready to make my way to dinner. The Old Hundred is one of Rose Street's earliest pubs and is a must when visiting Edinburgh. They have wonderful staff, excellent food, and a cozy pub atmosphere. They mostly offer hearty, delicious pub fare, but it's their famous sticky toffee pudding that keeps me coming back again and again. I've tried many variations of this ubiquitous British dessert, and I can honestly say theirs is the absolute best in the country. Now that we've stuffed ourselves, it's time to head to our hotel. And I've chosen to brave a night at Edinburgh's most haunted hotel, of course. The Scotsman. This building housed the editorial offices for the Scotsman newspaper for almost a century before becoming the luxurious hotel it is today. The elegant rooms are grandiose to say the least, with incredible views and personal touches that make you want to stay in your room all day. But you definitely can't skip their elaborate breakfast with anything you could dream of eating, as well as fantastic coffee and lovely attentive staff. But don't let these comfy, upscale lodgings fool you. The Scotsman Hotel has earned the reputation of being Edinburgh's most haunted and is a home to a whole slew of ghosts, including a phantom forger and that of a ghostly printer seen wandering the basement in early 20th century printer's uniform. Are you brave enough to spend the night here?